What do you do if you're a high school nerd and you're so unpopular you can't get a date? Why, you create your own date with a giant ass computer that's sitting in your bedroom, of course. Well, that's what you do according to the 1985 outrageous teen comedy Weird Science. So it's time to return to the weird and bizarre world of Gary and Wyatt, two 14-year-olds who create Lisa, their strange creation who helps to make all their wishes and dreams come true with hilarious consequences. So let's discover 10 more things that you didn't know about weird science. Written and directed by the amazing John Hughes, this movie has become one of those movies that everyone loves and frequently returns to, and it undoubtedly is a fan favourite. But the big question is, if we dig a little deeper, is there more information to unearth about this bizarre science fiction comedy? Well, of course there is, otherwise there wouldn't be a video. So it's time to look into 10 more things that you didn't know about weird science. As always, this is a follow-up episode to another weird science video that I made a few years ago. Just in case you were wondering why I don't cover certain things in this episode. So, let's check it out. What would you little maniacs like to do first? Number 10. The script was written amazingly fast. In the early 80s, writer John Hughes was increasingly reaching heights of success. He started off writing for National Lampoon magazine, but his writing talents took leaps and bounds to the big screen, where he would write the scripts for National Lampoon's Class Reunion, Mr. Mum, and National Lampoon's Vacation. And in 1984, he took another big step by writing and directing the teen comedy drama Sixteen Candles. The following year, 1985, would be a big year for Hughes, as he would write the scripts for The Breakfast Club, National Lampoon's Europe Vacation, and of course, Weird Science. What's even more amazing is the script for Weird Science was written in just two days. Yeah, imagine that, creating a pop cultural phenomenon in just two days. Many fans have noticed that Weird Science is not like your average John Hughes movie. Most of them, which, although are funny, are still grounded in reality. They are also character studies with plenty of heart and emotion, and a life lesson discovered along the way. Weird Science is more of a bizarre, wacky comedy that cheerfully defies logic, and could only exist in its own bizarre, off-the-charts universe. And it probably is his most outrageous movie. But some have pointed out that that makes Weird Science stand out more and feel more unique to Hughes' other works. Number 9. It may or may not be a comic book movie. Weird Science took its name from the EC comic book, which is also called Weird Science, as mentioned in my previous Weird Science episode. The comic book series ran from 1950 to 1953, and it was an anthology comic featuring many fantastical science fiction stories, which usually involved aliens and UFOs. Although some sources claim that it was Hughes himself who decided to name this movie after the comic series, others claim that it was Weird Science's producer Joel Silver who chose the unique title, as at the time he owned the film rights to EC Comics. And that theory actually makes more sense, as Silver ended up adapting fellow EC comic book Tales from the Crypt into the successful Tales from the Crypt TV series which ran from 1989 to 1996. However, there seems to be further contrasts of information, as it's claimed that the story of the movie of Weird Science is entirely John Hughes's creation. But Silver felt that the story of Weird Science was too similar to a story that featured in the Weird Science comic called Made of the Future, which is about a lonely man buying an artificial wife. In fact, Silver felt the similarities were so strong that he purchased the rights to the story to avoid legal issues, which may even be how the title Weird Science came into the frame. Joel Silver also ended up producing a weird science-based anthology series like Tales from the Crypt called The Perversions of Science, which only ran for one season in 1997. So, is the Weird Science movie an adaptation of the Weird Science comic? Well, there are similarities, and the movie does often feel like it pays homages to old science fiction. 
But I do feel like that the movie does have enough of its own identity. But if it is a comic book movie, then that means that Iron Man isn't Robert Downey Jr's first comic book movie. Number 8. Hughes made weird science so he can make another movie. Apparently, John Hughes wasn't happy while making Weird Science, what with him coming on board as the movie's director too. By accounts, there were a few issues behind the scenes, namely the original actress cast as Lisa, Kelly Emberg leaving the part shortly after filming had started due to creative differences, with Kelly LeBrock having to be quickly drafted into the part despite the fact that she previously turned the role down, as well as the decline of Hughes and Michael Anthony Hall's working relationship, but more on that later. Despite not really enjoying making Weird Science, Hughes agreed to direct Weird Science for Universal Pictures if they would also let him direct The Breakfast Club, which was something of a passion project of Hughes, one that he really, really wanted to do. So Weird Science exists so Hughes could make The Breakfast Club, with both movies being released in 1985. Hughes was apparently working on both movies at the same time, and working on The Breakfast Club would be a welcoming distraction to get his mind off his woes with weird science. Number 7. The Chet Poop Monster was going to be shot differently. Weird Science showcases many talented young actors who would go on to be big names, such as Michael Anthony Hall and Robert Downey Jr. But someone who really stands out is Bill Paxton as White's older brother Chet. He is so delightfully nasty and hilarious. He pretty much steals every scene that he's in. One iconic moment in Weird Science is when Chet finally gets his comeuppance, as Lisa uses her magical powers to turn him into a big pile of poo, where he is forced to apologize to White and Gary for his bullying antics. However, when filming that scene, Paxton was going to be in the poop suit himself. But when he was enclosed in it, he found it to be too small and claustrophobic. So the suit was just too difficult for him to work in. So it was game over, man. Instead, two short actors were used to climb inside the suit and operate it, with Paxton's voice being dubbed over. I guess you could say that working in that suit was too much of a shitty experience for Paxton. Wow, imagine the acting resume on those two performers who are in that poo suit. In the previous work section, I wonder if it would have said playing Bill Paxton's poop. Number 6. Parting of the ways for the two main leads. In Weird Science, we mainly follow the misadventures of teenagers Gary and Wyatt. Actor Elan Mitchell Smith played White, with Weird Science being his second film role but his first big breakthrough performance. However, after Weird Science, he mainly starred in TV shows here and there, particularly playing the comic relief Andy McAllister in the Superboy TV series in the late 80s and early 90s. However, he would retire acting, where instead he got a PhD in medieval studies, as well as becoming a professor of English at a Californian university. So, yeah, he's a teacher now. He did, however, briefly return to acting where he starred in an episode of The Goldbergs in 2013, in an episode titled Weird Science. Gary, on the other hand, was played by the as-mentioned Anthony Michael Hall, with Weird Science being the third John Hughes-related movie that he starred in. Fourth, if you want to include The Breakfast Club, which he was making with Hughes at the same time. The other two being National Lampoon's Vacation, where he played Rusty Griswold, and Sixteen Candles. Not only did Hall get top billing for Weird Science, his salary was supposedly double what his co-star Ilan Mitchell Smith was getting. However, supposedly while filming Weird Science, Hughes and Hall's relationship had soured, and they had a falling out, and that was the end of their working relationship, as the two would never work together again. It is said that Hall was going to star in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which Hughes was preparing at the time, but the fallout prevented that from happening. But it's not all bad, as Hall's career would continue to be strong after Weird Science, going on to star in Edward Scissorhands, and more recently, Halloween Kills. Number 5. Who left the small gift in the trailer? 
There's something of an urban legend associated with weird science that during the filming, Robert Downey Jr. broke into Kelly LeBrock's trailer when she wasn't there and did a number two. Despite years of rumors and speculation, Downey Jr. cleared things up during an interview with Howard Stern. He said it's not true. He didn't do his business in LeBrock's trailer, but he and co-star Robert Rusler, who played his on-screen best friend Max, often joked around on set, taunting their co-star saying that they were going to do number twos in one of their trailers, but without saying which cast member it's going to be as Downey Jr. and Roosler were something of a mischievous double act behind the cameras. Despite saying that he didn't do a jobby in LeBrock's trailer, he did, however, do it in another female's trailer, who also starred in Weird Science. This led to director John Hughes to question all the cast to try and get down to the bottom of who was the number two trailer bandit. And when questioned about it, Downey Jr. just said, nope, it wasn't me, but he wished that it was. Downey Jr. also said that he and Hughes got along really well and that there was a mutual respect between them. Hmm, so if it wasn't Kelly LeBrock's trailer, then whose was it? I wonder which actress was greeted with Robert Downey's juniors. Number four, the Weird Science song instantly jumped into Danny Elfman's head. Another standout aspect of Weird Science is its kick-ass funky theme song by Oingo Boingo, which was performed by Danny Elfman, yep, as in the movie score composer, who has given us the music to most of Tim Burton's movies as well as others. John Hughes had wanted a pop song to accompany the movie, so he phoned Elfman and asked him if he could come up with something, where Elfman and his new wave band Oingo Boingo created the Weird Science song. According to Wikipedia, Elfman got the song spontaneously in his head while driving in his car in LA, where he quickly raced to the studio and recorded a demo. And that was it, the song was created, it just popped into his head like that. The song was accompanied by a music video which features the band Oingo Boingo in a laboratory, while scenes of the movie are inserted. However, Elfman would later say that he felt embarrassed about the music video, and that it was the only Oingo Boingo music video of which he wasn't part of the production. Incidentally, Elfman would also go on to provide the theme for fellow EC Comics related property, the Tales from the Crypt TV series. The musical score for Weird Science was provided by composer Ira Newborn, who composed many other John Hughes movies, including Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Planes, Trains and Automobiles, and Uncle Buck, as well as The Naked Gun and Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Back on the Weird Science song by Oingo Boingo, did you know that that song would only reach 45 on the Billboard charts? Hmm, I would have thought that it would have done better. But I think the song has become more popular in time. Number 3. Deleted Scenes Just as with most movies, Weird Science has its fair share of deleted scenes. These include a scene at the start where Gary and Wyatt are watching Frankenstein, where Wyatt complains that it's too old and that it's not a scary movie, and further explains that movies like I Spit in Your Grave are the real scary movies, where Gary speaks of how he was left traumatized after watching Dawn of the Dead. The discussion then continues in the kitchen, where they start to get the idea of making a woman, where Gary questions why didn't Frankenstein make a woman, to which Wyatt replied he did, Bride of Frankenstein. There is also a really strange scene where these weird guys arrive at Gary and White's party and they are wearing hats like what Devo wore for Whip It, where they nervously ask if they can join the party. Another lost scene would have revolved around Gary and White's high school bullies Max and Ian, in which the sky was to open up and multicolored clouds would have surrounded the two characters, turning one of them into a donkey and the other one into a pig. However, the scene was cut when Joel Silver convinced John Hughes to remove it. <laughs> I would love to see that scene, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Number 2. Failed Reboot Slash Sequel so for a while, a reboot of Weird Science has been in the works, because modern Hollywood is going to be modern Hollywood. The reboot was announced in 2013 by Universal Pictures, with Joel Silver once again producing, and it was decided to go for a full hard R rating, making it as edgy and as naughty as other popular comedies at the time, like The Hangover and 21 Jump Street. A script was being written by 21 Jump Street scriptwriter Michael Bacall, who also wrote Scott Pilgrim vs. The World and Project X. However, nothing materialized, 
Now, going back to Wikipedia, Wyatt actor Alan Mitchell Smith spoke of an actual sequel to Weird Science in 2017, which according to him was to star Channing Tatum. However, nearly 10 years after its original announcement, there have been no reboot or sequel. So as of right now, it looks as though the project has been abandoned. Thus far, the closest thing we have to a continuation of Weird Science is the TV series which came out in the 90s, but I've already spoken about that in my previous Weird Science episode. Needless to say, when watching this show as a kid, I actually really enjoyed it. Number 1. Weird Cult Status If you can believe it, Weird Science was released with a PG-13 rating, which is quite amazing they got away with that considering it's kind of a raunchy comedy. If it was made these days, it'll no doubt be hit with an R rating. Weird Science was released in August 1985 and made nearly $39 million on a $7.5 million budget, so it was profitable. The film got mainly mixed reviews. It seems that critics were either on board with the joke, or they weren't with it and didn't like it. But Kelly LeBrock's performance was widely praised. Funny enough, Variety magazine, whose reviews I've often agreed with, gave what I thought to be a really bizarre review, where they said that Weird Science is not nearly as weird as it should have been. I mean, did they see Weird Science? The movie was pretty damn weird if you ask me. I mean, after all, it's about high school boys creating a woman out of a doll and a computer while wearing bras on their heads. It doesn't get much weirder than that. I think that Weird Science, like many fun crazy movies from the 80s, has developed a cult status, to the degree where most people are at least aware of the movie and its main song. Now it has to be noted that Weird Science is not your conventional John Hughes movie. It is wacky and off the charts, and I think that it came out at a time where Hughes was trying to make his comedies more deep, heartfelt and thought-provoking, as well as add human drama. Maybe that's why he didn't like making Weird Science, especially when compared to The Breakfast Club, which was his passion project at the time, which is full of angst and turmoil and human emotion. It is a story which emotionally awakens you, whereas Weird Science is like, hey, look at all these weird and wacky shenanigans. <laughs> but I love Weird Science. I find it genuinely funny and I really enjoy the characters and love its oddball zaniness. And it's the type of movie that could only exist in the 80s. And I do believe that it's just as celebrated as any other John Hughes movie. It just goes to show that sometimes in order to have a good time, you just need a little science. A little weird science. So that was my second look into weird science. And honestly, I wouldn't have thought that I would have spoken about feces as much as I did in this episode, but there you go. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Weird Science is a fun, crazy movie from the 80s. And if you love 80s cinema, then you will love this movie. There is no doubt about it that this is definitely one of the most wacky coming of age movies out there. But that just makes it more unique. Anyway, I'm Minty. And if you want to stand out and be popular, then you don't have to make a hot babe. Just be happy, be kind, be yourself, be brilliant, and be Arthur. See ya!